somebody who's really well suited to relationship selling and somebody who's well suited to transactional selling. One of the things about your business is think about what is your goal, what's your product, what's your service, and what the right model for the salesperson to work, as Mike was saying, within that structure is going to be. When you look to go hire, hire, hire hunters, great transactional salespeople, nothing gets in their way. They're going to go after the next deal. May not be the best person to develop those long-term relationships with doctors throughout Raleigh, North Carolina. Because that hunter is going to turn off the doctor. But that lower key relationship builder, the farmer, may be exactly what they're looking for. Because that builds trust and relationship. So think about those two ends of the spectrum. Both can be very successful. But you put them in the wrong environment, and they will fail. Yeah. Uh, we can have all the skills, and then we can sabotage ourselves because of self-limiting beliefs. And, uh, and the good news is that those self-limiting beliefs can respond well to coaching. And uh, I highlighted the top five on your sheet there that I passed out with you. The top five uh, self-limiting beliefs that I come across when I'm doing sales coaching with companies. One is a high need for approval. That means that the salesperson has more of a need to have approval of the prospect than to actually desire to win or close the business. And so they're, they get afraid to ask the, the hard questions because they're afraid that the prospect might get upset with them. And that's a big one. Uh, Non-supported buy cycle. Many people don't, don't understand this, but if you think about it, it really makes sense. If you yourself as a person, if, if the way you purchase things is not in sync with the way you sell things, and you fall vulnerable to customers saying, you know, we're going to put it off, we're going to think about it, they, when customers lie to you, when they when they uh, they do other things uh, that you're trying to close the, the, the uh, business with and you're not getting anywhere, and you're more vulnerable to those things if you yourself do those in your personal buying habits. The third one is issues with money. There's a lot of people that have issues with talking about money. And that can, that can also cause problems because if you're with a prospect and you need to know what their budget is or the things that you're selling or you need to, you need to know some, something about the financial part of this as a qualifier, then uh, you're more apt to not ask those questions. And a tendency to get emotionally involved. Now, this is, uh, this is a situation where, where uh, a salesperson can tend to be a worrier. They can, they can change strategies. Uh, right in the middle of the sales process, they can either become way too creative on the sales process or on the other extreme, way too analytical. Beliefs which are head trash, right? These are things that not taking responsibilities for your failures, blaming it on outside external factors. You know, I didn't close that deal with Mr. Jones because global warming. You know, I mean, you make, you, you make excuses about everything except what the real reason is. So those are the, those are the basic things that respond well to sales coaching, and uh, sales coaching either internally through a coaching mechanism that the company has, or externally if, if uh, coaching or mentoring is needed. Thank you. Are being impacted by uh, the economy that really has not all the way recovered yet. Got that one? All right, who's being impacted by the not, not the advent, but the onrush of e-commerce. Is that a big deal? How are your customers buying? And then the last one I want to talk about is um, this generation called the baby boomers. You all know about these folks, right? Maybe got one or two in the room. This is the demographic element group that paid for most of America for a long, long time. And what's happening to them? They're getting old. They're aging out. There's my mom. She's 72, right? And she's not, no more kids. You know, uh, all we want her to do is pay for the grandkids' college education. <laughs> I, I just think that that's fundamentally changing our approach and our thought about, you know,
know why someone should do business with us. The distribution model of e-commerce has changed it totally for banking. These guys over here know it, right, with me. And then you think about well, who's the target market uh, anyway. It is, is a critical time uh, to have a sound grasp on you know, what is it that is our brand? What is it that we do? Because your competitive advantage is not what you say, it is what you do. It is a profession. 